Hello and most welcome to 2017. 2017. Wow. <laughs> 2017. Not bad. We will today continue with Michael Esfield's Quantum Entanglement and the Metaphysics of Relations. Last time was what, which was what quite short to say the least. <laughs> uh, the A part of this, I just mentioned mentioned that momentum and spin they are all relational. So even these, what could one say, in endogenous or indigenous feature that feels so utterly indigenous, really coming from the inside, they are oddly enough actually scientifically proven from the outside. And our, as I mentioned last time, our thinking procedures can never lead us correct in this way. We need experimentation here to bring sanity to the <laughs> to the whole thing. I got a question through the web earlier. Does quantum relations also apply to causality? I think that's a rather good question. We still haven't ventured into that part so far, but I think it's a very apt question. Yes, it does. This is called indefinite causality. Indefinite causality. And it applied to all events in the universe. Bar none. So here we have yet another very interesting feature that even relations that we think are absolutely separate, like causal connections, A causes B, are also, oddly enough, <laughs> this is just beyond belief, but they also have the foundation relation. They come from the whole, and as we mentioned before, we had an example with the bicycle. A bicycle can have a spin, it can have a momentum but the individual parts do not have it. They have undefined causality or indefinite causality. It's, it's first when it comes together. And I think you here you can spot the, <laughs> the observer because it is our knowledge, our understanding that puts all these disparate parts, spokes, wheels, pedals, into a bike, into what becomes a bicycle. Before that, we have nothing. We have neither more. Momentum, spin, or <laughs> we are stranded with nothing. <laughs> Which is it is in by itself not a bad thing. Not at all. It's actually rather a uh, crucial advantage. Okay. 
that makes reality more on par with our knowledge. If I twist it quite a bit, one could say, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be odd if the parts of the bike all had different momentums when we want to use the bike and lead our way to our work or this nice picnic out in the woods? It has a purpose, almost, <laughs> yeah, a bit suhandan. We use all of the back, you, all of the bike as one thing, one thing only. This could also be helpful in better understanding entanglement. This is what I usually refer to as, well, not me only, but quantum holism, that everything is one totality. Deeply interconnected. As one entirety. So the only exception to this rule, if you want to call it a rule, would be the spiral, the fundamental spiral. The chirality is at the bottom. And in an odd way, chirality in itself, it's not relational. That could be the only thing in the universe that is absolutely indigenous but it's not inside though still it's not an insideness that brings about chirality it's an outsideness you cannot describe chirality you can't bring it you can't reduce it to individual parts i hope that makes some sense in better explaining what is this relational quantum mechanics. I will now continue on page 211, or if you got it as a PDF, page nine. We are currently on the third paragraph. The third paragraph. <laughs> Second on page 611. Thank you very much, Kalle. Second on page 611, if you've got that system. And I read directly. A similar consideration applies to any case of entanglement. There are global observables of the whole, of the whole, that have a definite numerical value in the state in question. <clears throat> and that can be considered as intrinsic properties of the whole. Speaking of the devil, there we are. These properties of the whole indicate the way in which the parts are related 
with respect to the state dependent properties for they contain correlations between the probability distributions of the respective state dependent properties of the parts although these state dependent properties cannot be attributed to each of the parts We can thus set out an account of quantum entanglement in this way. Listen up. Listen up. <laughs> One. Quantum entanglement shows that there are non-supervenient relations among physical systems over and above the spatiotemporal relations. Two. The non-supervenient relations of entanglement among the parts of a quantum whole amount to the whole having intrinsic properties that do not supervene on intrinsic properties of the past. Intrinsic properties of the past. Three. These properties of the whole come to non-separability in the following sense. The parts have some of the properties that belong to the family of properties which make something a quantum system not separately. Not separately. But only in this way. There are properties of the whole which indicate the manner in which the parts are related with each other with respect to some of the properties that make them something that makes something a quantum system a quantum system We spell out the non-supervenient relations in the quantum case in terms of non-separability. And thus holism as proposed here. Quantum theory is no longer neutral with respect to the issue, issue of metaphysics of
of intrinsic properties versus and metaphysics of relations. Do you hear? This is amazing. It's amazing echo. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Please repeat the amazing phrase. I will. Thank you. Listen up now. This should be engraved in stone, better gold. If we spell out the non-supervenient relations in the quantum case in terms of non-separability and thus as thus holism as proposed here. And here it comes. Quantum theory is no longer neutral with respect to the issue of a metaphysics of intrinsic properties versus a metaphysics of relations. And this is in parentheses scientifically proven and absolutely astonishing. A message that needs to get out, end of parenthesis. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh, quantum yeah. theory is no longer neutral with respect to the issue of uh, metaphysics <laughs> of intrinsic properties versus a metaphysics of relations. Yes. Quantum theory interpreted in, in terms of non-separability speaks in favor of a metaphysics of relations that do not require any intrinsic properties of the related quantum systems. Of the related quantum systems as far as the properties that are subject to entanglement are concerned. There is no reason to suppose that there are intrinsic properties of the related systems in question, of the related system in question. The relations among the systems are determined from above, so to speak. From above. Or from the totality, if you prefer. namely by the pure state of the whole, of the pure state of the whole. This way of determining the relations make it superfluous to call for intrinsic properties of the related systems of the related systems even if there is no question of intrinsic properties constituting a supervenience basis for the relations
all we need for these relations to obtain is systems in the sense of entities of which properties can be predicted and be it relational properties <laughs> such as listen now being entangled with being entangled with and even better there's no need for the systems of which such properties can be predicated to be distinct individuals. Distinct individuals. No longer. Quantum systems have more properties than the state-dependent ones, which are subject to entanglement, namely state-independent properties such as mass or charge. <laughs> One may wonder, indeed, whether these are intrinsic properties. Intrinsic properties. Could they be? What do you think? Intrinsic properties. Intrinsic properties. And this is so interesting. Some are getting stranded here because it becomes wildly interesting. This is the reward for the tough work. <laughs> And now we get our reward. However that may be, bringing state-independent properties into focus can at most show that quantum systems may have intrinsic properties that are not relevant to the correlations that quantum theory describes. Thus, referring to state independent properties can at most illustrate the following point. The following oh. point. <laughs> if one puts forward an argument for a metaphysics of relations, on the basis of a physical theory, one cannot exclude that the physical systems in question have some intrinsic property or other. What one can seek to establish is only that the relations 
which the physical theory in question treats do not call for any intrinsic properties of the related systems. Poor Newton and Darwin. Poor things, I cry out. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, since quantum theory is our basic physical theory, it would be desirable to derive state independent properties within the formalism of quantum theory within the formalism of quantum theory. The idea then is to get to state independent properties such as charge and mass on the basis of state dependent properties. Non Relativistic quantum mechanics can be taken to describe single physical systems such as electrons, neutrons, protons, and the like. And the like. <laughs> These are single physical systems because as far as quantum mechanics is concerned, there always is a definite number of them. There always is a definite number of them. They are subjects of the predication of properties each and be properties such as is entangled with other systems. Quantum systems of the same kind whose states are entangled are indistinguishable. They are indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. <laughs> There are no qualitative properties whatsoever. Whatsoever. <laughs> Not even relational conditional probabilities. That distinguish one such system from all the other ones. All the other ones, all of them. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Nonetheless, one can maintain that quantum systems are individuals if one is prepared to acknowledge non-qualitative properties such as primitive thisness. Primitive thisness. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Miss thisness. <laughs> The proposal made in this section is compatible with such a view. With such a view. But the point is that it does not commit us to more than acknowledging that as far as quantum physics is concerned, quantum systems are those things that stand in the correlation without any, any, without any properties any intrinsic properties or anything like a primitive thisness being required for standing in the correlations. And by that goes a stain out of the window, out of the monadic window. <laughs> Out of the window of the monad, <laughs> if you like. Sorry for that Leibnizian joke. Hence, both the friends of non-individuals and the friends of individuals can agree with the metaphysics of relations proposed in this section. It is important to disentangle the issue of quantum entanglement from the issue of, of individuals. Entanglement rules out that there are individuals that are distinguished by some qualitative properties. But it does not exclude that there may be individuals too cool. Too cool! Oh, it does not exclude that there may be individuals. <laughs> yeah, let's think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Three, next subchapter, a moderate versus a radical metaphysics of relations.
the position argued for in the preceding section comes close to what Stephen French and James Ladyman advocate as metaphysical or ontic structural realism. Ontic structural realism. Namely, the view that structure is what is real, structure is real, and that there are no intrinsic properties underlying structure. Structure is what is real, and there are no intrinsic properties underlying structure. <laughs> James <laughs> Lady Man, James <laughs> Lady Man. <laughs> the argument for this position also uses. makes also use of quantum entanglement. Ladyman. <laughs> it's a catacrisis. The catacrisis. Concludes by envisaging that structural realism amounts to the claim that theories tell us not about the objects and properties of which the world is made, but directly about structure and relations. Structure and relations. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> suggesting that there is no need to admit objects in metaphysics. No need to admit objects in metaphysics. No need at all. The structural realism of French and Ladyman thus seems to be a radical metaphysics of relations. It rejects not only the claim that, one, things have to be something in themselves, that is, must have intrinsic properties over and above the relations in which they stand. But also the claim that, two, Relations require relata. That is, things which stand in the relations. The metaphysics of relations advocated in the preceding section, by contrast, dismisses only the first claim, the first claim,
it therefore is a moderate metaphysics of relations. Moderate. Moderate metaphysics of relations. <laughs> The argument of this paper accepts that relations require things that stand in the relation. And in parenthesis, although these things do not have to be individuals and they need not have intrinsic properties. and regards physical theories as referring to th things. Referring to things. In particular, the argument of the preceding section says nothing against quantum theory referring to quantum systems and describing the properties of these systems. Albeit somewhat peculiar relational properties. In other words, an argument that builds on quantum entanglement seems to be sufficient only to renounce. <laughs> but does not touch upon two. at least as far as quantum mechanics is concerned, there are quantum systems that stand in relations, even if it can be maintained that they fall short of being individuals. Individuals! And I think this is a good... Point, but pause. I'm on currently on page eleven. Yes, let me see. Uh, individuals being the last word. Individuals. <laughs> individuals. <laughs> It's page 613. 613. 613. 13, 13. 13, 13. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I will now go for some quotes. Well, as always, when you have a tough paper, there is a reward. There is a gem at the other side of the rainbow, a treasure. And now we're coming to this treasure. <laughs> <laughs> and just when we got to the treasure, I need to change room here. So I'm gonna make a pause. Recording resumed. So here we found a lot of interesting stuff. Thank you.
maybe the predominant thing was on my page nine already. Actually, the very first sentence I read, that would be on page 611. As similar, that's the first sentence I read, a similar consideration applies to any case of entanglement. There are global observables of the whole that have a definite numerical value in the state in question and that be considered as intrinsic properties of the whole. Isn't that interesting? That's the first helper to get to the real point. So where are the properties? Are they situated in the whole? <laughs> or are they this aforementioned thisness somewhere inside of the atom or monad? We will soon get the result. Already on the next page, beginning actually on this page, And this is the sentence I read out before. And I'll read it again because it's so great. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> if we spell out the non-supervenient relations in the quantum case in terms of non-separability and thus holism as proposed here, quantum theory is no longer neutral with respect to the issue of a metaphysical metaphysics of intrinsic properties versus a metaphysics of relations. A proven fact, and I will add to that, a very little known prov proven fact as well. Who do not believe in intrinsic properties? I would say everyone does today. This is how we think of the world. And bottom up. <laughs> it sounds sort of dirty, but it's not. Bottom up relations are all there is. That's reductionism, isn't it? Isn't that reductionism? So... To add insult to injury, reductionism is thereby proven wrong. <laughs> yes, yes. Who knows this? Very few, if any. I'd say all strands of knowledge today continue into the already cut up path of reductionism. It is the natural way to think if you don't know about what has been proven scientifically. This is my point. So this is the need for scientific proofs. We cannot stay without them. We cannot think alone. And it would be, in this case, it's not enough with uh, a gathering of all the knowledge that we had before. It doesn't matter how far we go back. No, we need this experimental, experimentally proven fact to start think differently. And further down on the same paragraph there about five lines, there is a sentence that I'm going to cut me in. No, I'm going to read it after the semicolon, the colon. The relations among the systems are determined from above to speak, so to speak. Not from above, I would say only, but from the global, from the totality, from everything. <laughs> and I can imagine now you get a bit of a better point of what is this global reality in contrast to the local reality. 
don't think we well very known to be a fact and this is one of the reasons the Nobel Prize laureates aspect Klausinger and Seilinger got awarded the Nobel Prize in 2022 no 2022 yes that's correct we skip one paragraph and we'll get to the next ones there is a We now take a look at the counters here. Five lives down from the paragraph that begins with non-relativistic quantum mechanics. And if you go five lines down there, quantum systems of the same kind whose systems are entangled are indistinguishable. <laughs> So now we get an understanding and it's much easier to grasp, oddly enough, although it takes a lot from us to accept, firstly, that everything is relational. What is this we can grasp now? It's about entanglement. If the universe is a whole, everything being connected is not that strange anymore. It's almost natural. <clears throat> about six lines further down on that uh, a mid-sentence again quantum systems are those things that stand in the correlations without any intrinsic properties or anything like a primitive thisness being required for standing in the correlation so there is no need for a primitive thisness in a way. Although it doesn't hurt, it cannot be completely excluded, but uh, since there is no need for it. You get my drift? No longer a need for it. So this all-pervasive, constantly present, absolute need for separability, as Einstein would have it, it's not necessary. And that, in a nutshell, is the important thing. And let's go now to the sub-chapter three. <laughs> a moderate versus a radical metaphysics of relations. The more radical uh, might be, my pointer here, and I'm not absolutely sure, might be making claims that are a bit over the top, unnecessary. The aforementioned Stephen French and James Ladyman advocate as metaphysical or ontic structural realism, namely the view that structure is what is real, listen now, and that there are no intrinsic properties underlying structure. And it goes as well as Ensfield's view. Is only that the, they go a step further, not allowing for thisness at all. Let's go further down on that, on that page. It rejects not only this is about eight lines down, it rejects not only the claim that one. Things have to be something in themselves that is must have intrinsic properties over and above the relations in which they stand, but also the claim that two relations require relata, that is, things which stand in the relations. Ansfield has a medium view but i don't think it's important for today's discussion but we let's get back to it. he has a medium view that says a bit it could be a thisness but it's not important 
But I think the amazing thing to make a conclusion of the conclusion is it's a scientific fact that there are no need for intrinsic properties to have all the features of physics, including angular momentum, force, weight, and so on and so on. <laughs> this in itself is extremely valuable, priceless. Kalle, please come in. Thank you. So you this paper, Bicefield from 2004, has uh, now 20 years. It's its birthday this year of 20 years. Oh, wow. That's a coincidence. Yes. <clears throat> Let me mention Stephen French. Uh, Stephen French and James Sediment, they advocate as metaphysical or ontic structural realism. Namely, the view that structure is what is real and there are no intrinsic properties on the structure. Hallelujah! And, uh, and let me now uh, show you their current position because this was about 20 years ago. Uh, I suppose they still have this position, but they have been publishing. Um, the current publications. Here uh -huh. is the page of Stephen French. Stephen French, in person. Yes. yes. And this last year, 2023, he published a book. Excuse me. Um, let me see. Excuse me. So here, a phenomenological approach to quantum mechanics. Wow. What is the chain of correlations? Hmm. Said in parentheses, um, our university library of Gothenburg has this book as an e-book. Uh -huh. As an e-book, so it's great. Um, so he has continued here, still going strong 20 years later. Wow. And now uh, let's go to James Ladyman. And this a is man Ladyman. with a catacrisis name. <laughs> oxymoron, <laughs> oxymoron, oxymoron as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, effective ontic structural realism, a paper from this very year, co authored with Lorenzo Lorenzetti, whoever Lorenzo Lorenzetti is. <clears throat> and uh, so they are going strong 20 years later, both on the same wow. subjects. Wow. And um, hmm. So perhaps we should read something by James Ladyman sometime in the future, or by nice. French. Yeah. Or Stephen Absolutely. French, yeah. Let me return um, to the paper. Let's read. Um, so where is the truth? Um, um, Carl Rovelli, um, he says that tango is not a dance for two, but for three. Very <laughs> yeah, the observer. <laughs> so yeah. you need, so it's, let's say electron is red, one electron is red, then the other electron also has to be red. Then that yeah. electron. And you need actually a third person to see this relation, to control it, so to say. Um, but my, uh, I don't know what Rovelli says about intrinsic properties, so I, will, I don't dare to comment on that. But perhaps uh, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Uh, that uh, relations are necessary, but there are some kind of properties also. Um, what could yes, he is. I mean, he's probably holding a middle position or uh wait until further results mm -hmm. yeah yeah something like that definitely uh, because it's, it's i think it's too far to go tyrannical as french lady man say that all these structures are relevant mm. uh, i think i i myself at least i take a middle position 
Uh, Lease on car properties. Uh, but, but I don't know. Uh, I'm uh, cautious about this, so I will uh, not utter too much. And um, perhaps we should leave it there, Hans, for today. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And I quite agree with you, Kalle. Uh, I, I take the position of Mike Lensfeld vaguely because I don't know either. Uh, the amazing thing, I think that my takeaway from the whole thing is that intrinsic properties, they could be there, they could be a thisness, but they are not really necessary, not even for having the weight of the proton or the neutrino or whatever it might be. That That is for my my taste radical enough. <laughs> I don't need mm. more. <laughs> mm, absolutely, absolutely. I do remember how radical it is. It is quite amazingly radical. Mm. It pulls out the chair under the bum of uh, uh, any sort of reductionism as we know it. Mm -hmm. And as awesome. we know, reductionism is everywhere now. There is, I, I don't think there are any exceptions to direction. It's, it's in every strand of knowledge these days. Mm. That is a gem. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But I, um, well, I, I, we, let's end there. Yeah, sure. We do as you say. We end here. Uh, thank you very much, Kalle Lundahl. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Have a beautiful morning, day, or afternoon, wherever you are. Bye-bye for now.